Welcome to Electro Online. Here's a second example of how to find the points of intersection of two polar equations. Now again, if we draw it graphically, you can see there's actually three places where the graphs overlap. One right there, one at the origin, and one down here. So we should be able to find those three. But it's not as easy as you might think. We'll show you why. So the first technique we would use is set the two equations equal to each other and find for which angle theta the two values are equal. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have r1 is equal to r2, r1 being 1 plus the sine of theta. And notice both of these functions are what we call cardioids. So two cardioid functions drawn like this do indeed overlap three times. So we have 1 plus the sine of theta equals 1 plus the cosine of theta. So we can subtract 1 from both sides, which gives us sine of theta is equal to the cosine of theta. So for which values is the sine of theta equal to the cosine of theta? And we know that's the case at 45 degrees, but it's also the case at 45 plus 180 or 225 degrees. So in other words, theta equals 45 degrees, or we have the two equal to each other again at theta being equal to 225 degrees. So that would be pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So using this technique does allow us to find two of the three points of intersection. This one right here and this one down here at 45 and at 225 degrees. The reason why we can say that they're both valid is because the way the functions are written, notice that at 45 degrees and at 225 degrees, they do have exactly the same value. And notice that this is not a negative value, even though it's in the third quadrant, they're both positive since one is larger than the square root of two over two. So two positive values here, two positive values there, and they're on opposite ends on the polar axis there. Now, we also realize that both functions will indeed become zero, but for different angles. And since that happens for different angles, that third point at the origin could not be found using this technique, because for the same angle theta, both the functions do not have the value equal to zero at that time. It is at different angles, I shouldn't say time, but at different angles, and therefore we can only really realize that's the case by drawing it graphically or by building up a table of values like this. But at least now we realize when we do all the techniques together, we graph the functions, we set the two equations equal to each other and solve it trigonometrically, and then we set up a table of values, we're almost certainly to find all the points of intersection like we did in this case. And that's how it's done.